evening and welcome to Oasis. My name is Deanna and we are really glad that you have joined us tonight. Uh, for the last couple of years, I have been trying to start each morning with a devotion. And there's always at the end of it um, suggested Bible verses that accompany the devotion. And frankly, I never look them up. Um, but a couple months ago, um, I guess sort of hoping it served like extra credit, I decided I would start looking them up. And uh, this morning's devotion went along with Psalm 23, which for some people is very familiar. Um, the King James Version of Psalm 23 goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lately, I have really been appreciating the message translation of the Bible, which is written in more contemporary language. Um, it was written by Pastor Eugene Peterson and printed, I believe, for the first time in the early 90s. So by definition, um, way more recent publication. Um, and the, the words that he uses are a little bit more modern. And so I looked up Psalm 23 in the message and read it in a new and wonderful way that I would also like to share with you. God is my shepherd. I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. I'm going to read that last part one more time because it's so good it deserves to be read twice. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Maybe we need to catch our breaths tonight. Maybe we need help finding the right direction. If so, I think we're in the right place because no matter who you are or where you come from, you are welcome here. Let us pray. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Thank you again for those of us um, who are able to be here tonight and our online viewers. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined us. A couple uh, quick announcements. Next week, Thanksgiving Eve service right here, 6 o'clock. Please join us. Um, and then following that is starts our Advent series uh, where the pastors will walk us through uh, the season of Advent, the season of waiting. So please join us for that. Um, tonight, so delighted to talk to Betty Maybe. Um, Betty and her husband, Tim, known to some of us as Pastor Tim, um, uh, joined uh, our, our St. Luke's family almost, a, actually just over a year ago, uh, which is, which is kind of wild. So I'm just going to dive right into it. Um, Betty, tell us um, where you live. Tell us who the people and pets who live with you. Uh, we live on the east side of Madison, and of course, oh, okay. Uh, Tim is home with me, of course, and we have our three dogs. Uh, Freddie is our West Highland Terrier. Cooper is a terrier mix, and then we have Bilbo, who's a Cairn Terrier. And I have three kids um, and one daughter-in-law. And they're all up in the St. Paul area. My oldest son, Tim, is a pastor up there. And John is, um, he does accounting. And my daughter, Allison, just got her Juris Doctorate and uh, is a law clerk for a district court judge up there. And what keeps you busy during the day and what do you love about it? 
Well, I work full time remotely for Iowa State University for the Office of Research Ethics. And um, so I'm at a computer all day long, which can be very tedious sometimes. But I do enjoy I, working with uh, the folks that I've left back in Iowa. And uh, we all get along so well, so it's, it's nice to be able to connect with them during the day as well. Um, and I do work with our website and training um, that people might need. And um, so that keeps me busy. And I also get the chance to go out uh, side with the dogs and play with them during the day too, to take breaks. So. And um, if you would, walk us through a little bit of your faith story and maybe tell us some of the, the bookmarks, some of the events that were kind of pivotal um, to you and your faith walk. Okay. Well, um, I guess it's kind of ironic that uh, I'm married to a pastor now because when I was born, the house that we lived in was a parsonage. And my family just happened to be renting it. So I figure I'm starting out with the parsonage and ending up with pastor at the end. And um, let's see. Well, uh, we moved to Iowa when I was six years old, and we joined the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church. And that was, that was always my safe place. You know, I was involved with everything as a child. And, and um, my father was an alcoholic, and so being able to go there and having that family along with my mom and, and my siblings uh, was a wonderful thing. And um, it got us through a lot, I think. And I would go to camp with, you know, youth camp, and that did quite a bit for me, I think. Um, but one thing, when I went to camp, I was always almost jealous and feeling bad about myself because I had other people telling me that they were having these mountaintop experiences where they really felt the presence of God, and, and I just wasn't having that. And I thought, why don't I feel that, you know? And so anyways, uh, going on, I met Tim again, and we married, and he was Catholic at the time. Not practicing too much, I don't think, <laughs> at that time. And uh, I have to mention, when we um, were still going, first going out and still in Iowa, uh, I took him to a Christmas Eve service, and when we were going to sing uh, Joy to the World, he was sitting beside me singing Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Oh. So... <laughs> He's naughty. Anyways, so, so uh, we moved down to Albuquerque, and, and uh, this is more of Tim's story, so I'm not going to really get into uh, too much of that, how we got involved in the church down there, but we did get involved. And uh, we started teaching fifth grade together, and I got in the choir and, and everything, and um, uh, we eventually someone asked us to join a small group and we thought, no way. You know, because we weren't quite that freaky yet. So, <laughs> but, uh, and uh, then we ended up back in Iowa. We had my oldest son while we were down in Albuquerque and he was just a couple months old when we came back up here. And uh, I went church shopping when we moved down to Des Moines and uh, happened to find this fantastic church and made friends with uh, uh, Dave and Julie Navy, who are wonderful people, and they got me involved with, with uh, the choir and the praise band and everything. And, um, and then they invited us to small group. And Tim and I thought, oh, we don't know if we want to do this. And because I felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know the Bible. I, you know, I'm going to be sitting there with these people who have been in small group forever, and I can tell that they're just wonderful Christians and they know what they're, <laughs> they're uh, doing. And I felt like I just, you know, didn't belong. But we went to the small group 
because they talked us into it, because they talked us into a lot of things. And uh, it was like, finally, uh, I went home and cried, oops, sorry. I went home and cried that night because I thought, I finally found what I was missing. And it was that fellowship, and I didn't feel horrible that I wasn't a biblical scholar, you know? They met me right where I, right where I was, and I really needed that. Um, they eventually invited us to go to, uh, let's see, I think it was family camp first. And we did that for, we ended up doing that for what, 20 years or something like that. Um, and that's where we went every, every summer with our kids. And uh, I think most of them had their first communion at family camp when they were teeny tiny. And uh, then we went to, we were invited again to go to Curcio or Via de Cristo. I don't know if you've heard of those. And it's, it's a weekend for uh, married couples, but uh, they're kept separate. And that was when Tim discerned that he was called to be a pastor. And so he'll go into that sometime. Um, so we ended up going to seminary, and seminary is a whole story in its own. <laughs> So I won't go into that at all. Um, but we ended up going uh, to Tim's first call, which was at a very large church. And uh, Tim and I then decided to take on the small group ministry. And so we trained people to be small group leaders. And then they, in turn, went out and started their own groups. And I don't know how many small groups they have now at First Lutheran and in Cedar Rapids, but it went, you know, it just blew up into a fantastic ministry. Um, and eventually we went to uh, a couple different calls, but in Norwalk, Iowa, this is where we really um, uh, developed friendships within our small group, and we ended up uh, going to family camp. My, um, our friends from our original church, Zion, where, who invited us to go to family camp, uh, they made a video with me at camp telling our new parishioners why they should come to family camp. And it worked, and there were like 33 of us who would go to family camp together, and we'd all stay in one big beach house and share, I don't know, two bathrooms, I think. It was crazy. But, um, so I think small group ministry has been the biggest you know, influence in my faith walk. And uh, it was just what I was missing. And now we're here and involved in chorale and uh, women's Bible study. And uh, Tim leads uh, an adult Bible study as well, which if you never been to one with him, you really should go. So <laughs> it's really interesting. So, um, so I guess that's kind of it. And I love, um, I love how you began your small group um, journey, thinking we're not that freaky yet, right? Like yeah. I don't want to do it, and then ended up training people to right. lead small groups. Right. So I mean, mm -hmm. you you really sort of you you made that walk, right. and I and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I would love to touch on a little bit. That, I, that you mentioned and I think is so important for, for, for me to hear, for everyone to hear, is when you said, um, when you were invited to join some of this stuff, mm -hmm. your initial thought was, I don't know enough right. about the Bible. I don't know enough about my faith. I don't know enough about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to feel vulnerable and exposed, and these people ha know what they're doing. And um, I would love to, to have you talk a little bit more about what sort of your experience um, kind of owning that I'm a beginner and, and, and how that has influenced your faith life because I think that that is a deterrent to a lot of people getting right. involved is they think they have to have something figured out, right. not realizing that it's a bunch of other people who don't have it figured out <laughs> either. So tell us how sort of coming to that realization and kind of owning that that amateur status that I still feel like I wear every single day, um, how that influenced your, your faith? Well, I think knowing that I was and still am a novice um, 
is very humbling, first of all, um, because I know that uh, I will never know everything and that I'm constantly evolving. And, and um, even, you know, some people think that Tim is a b- biblical scholar, <laughs> and, but he knows... I love that you laugh when you <laughs> say that. <laughs> well, I think he is. But <laughs> right, hon? And, um, but even he will tell you that every time he reads a passage, he sees it in a different way. And that's what has, you know, is exciting for me um, when I go to Bible study and I uh, really um, get involved with discussion and thinking in different ways and causing questions to pop up in other people's minds. I think it's, it's, that's what growth for me as a Christian is all about, is uh, I may never find all the answers, but I'm thinking about them and I know that God is in everything that we do. So. And how does your faith, when you think about your professional life, you mentioned some coworkers that, that you really get along with. When you live out your, your professional life, your family life, how does what you, your belief in God and your faith, how, does that, um, how, does, how do you see that working and how does that help you make decisions or live your, your life outside of church? Um, I think we're all on this journey together. And we're all at different spots, you know, different, different places in our walk. And it's important to realize that. It's important to realize that we have different opinions. Um, and so I think it's really, uh, you need to be aware and listen to other people and um, in order to identify where they are and, and how they're thinking and... and um, with our kids too, uh, they they are all at different levels of of their faith walk as well. Still, you know, and even though they were all camp counselors and everything, it's they kind of all went in their different directions. But uh, I think you just have to be constant about uh, being kind and listening and just loving people. Kind, listening, and loving people. I like that. Um. I have a little list here of, I would put it under like things you might not know about me. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on, hold on, where did it go? Oh, it's, it's, I don't know where it went, but here's what I need you to tell me. I was going to read it off there, but you can just tell me. Oh, here I have some here um, if you need them. <laughs> you were in a cover band mm-hmm. that traveled all over Iowa. Mm-hmm. You sang backup for an Elvis impersonator. Yes. Um, I know, right? Like these are just things that you don't that you that we need this kind of forum to find these things out. Mm-hmm. I want to know what covers you covered mm-hmm. uh, in the band. Tell us what you remember most fondly about about that time. Oh, okay. Well, uh, first of all, when I was in high school, I uh, got to tour Europe with, like, with yes. America's Youth in Concert, and we sang at Carnegie Hall, oh. and uh, so that, of course, was thrilling, and uh, I think the most, uh, the thing that really touched my heart about that was when we sang at uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral, and we sang Ave Maria, oh. and that was just you know, just so moving. Um, I was in a band that was uh, led by my high school choir director, and that was so much fun. And that was the cover band? That was the cover band. (laughs) And we, um, uh, I did songs, you know, it was mostly from the late 70s and early 80s, but uh, some different people, Pat Benatar, uh, Olivia Newton-John, the motels, and you know, just anybody who played back then. And uh, so that was fun traveling with that group of people and uh, had some strange experiences. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, so then I also sang uh, backup for Jamie Aaron Kelly, who uh, he's called The Essence of Elvis was his the name of his um, touring uh, 
band, whatever, and uh, had the fantastic opportunity several times to sing along with the Jordanaires, who are his, uh, excuse me, were Elvis's male backup singers uh, who are still going. And uh, the um, most fun that we had was up in, at Ho-Chunk Casino. We played up there and we had a um, concert of like 2,000 people out in the audience, so that was fun. And so we'll have to see how that stuff transitions yeah. to the corral. Yeah, huh? some, no, no. some morning <laughs> we'll get a surprise. Yeah, sweet Caroline. You are also a published author mm -hmm. um, and are working on some new material right now. So tell us about that. Right. Um, I was published in 2013. I wrote a, a young adult urban fantasy called Phoenix the Rising. And um, I started working on a sequel, but I just haven't done a lot with that. But I've been working on a series called The Tip Top Cafe. It's a small town romance, and I'm on the second book of that called Moonflower Road. And another one that I'm really uh, having fun writing is uh, a, uh, what shall I call it, a romantic psychological thriller. And sort of like the Nicholas Sparks type. Okay. And it's called When She Fell. And so have fun with that. I love all these all these things that we get to learn about you, and I'm sure it sparks a connection, whether it's with Elvis or um, or, or public publishing. Um, I I love that people can can learn these things about you in addition to your faith walk. Thanks. So thanks for for sharing mm -hmm. some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a way I like to close the interviews this year is with a question that Oprah Winfrey asks her guests, which is. What do you know for sure? And you can answer that in any way that you would like. Betty, maybe what do you know for sure? Well, I know that God loves me unconditionally and um, that I'm just never alone. Good things to know. Good. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.